Hi, February 8, 2021. I haven't done a proper study now in a long time. And so that's what I'm going to do today. Many of you may have noticed that I do not push the rapture narrative that is so prevalent among the Christian groups on YouTube, the end time groups, okay? And I have been asked why, and so I will try to coherently answer this question from the Bible. There are even some people who believe that I am personally working against the rapture taking place. As ridiculous as it sounds, this is what some believe in their hearts. So let's take a look at the timelines that are clearly shown in the Bible, in the words of Jesus, in the words of Paul and others. And let's compare it to what we were all told in church, okay? And what is being pushed today by the end timers who at most claim that they have overcome the false teachings that the church has been putting out. So let's take a look. We're going to take a look at the rapture timeline as given by Jesus himself. Okay? And we're also going to have a look at the timeline, possible timeline, of millennial and eternal reign. So, first of all, we need to establish that there is such a thing as age. Age is a time period that is often used in the Bible. Age, let me find it for you. It's Greek 165 aeon, okay? A space of time, an age. An age, a cycle of time, especially of the present age as contrasted with the future age and of one of the series of ages stretching to infinity. It's, we don't know how long it is, we just know it is. It's like an era, okay? And Jesus himself and others use this to describe the timeline of things that will happen and has happened. So the example of it, one of the examples in, is in Colossians 126, where Paul writes, The mystery that has been kept hidden for ages and generations, but is now disclosed to the Lord's people. So he's talking about some mystery in Colossians chapter 1, and then he says, The mystery that has been kept hidden for ages, and generation. So obviously, for ages before the time that Paul is living it, because he is speaking of the mystery being revealed at that time. So there were ages before Paul, before Jesus. There were ages. Okay? Same in Ephesians 3 5, which was not made known to people in other generations. As it has now been revealed by the Spirit to God's holy apostles and prophets. Now when you go to KJV. Which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men. Blah, 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 right? Ages. And you can go check the Greek version. You're going to find many examples where... The apostles or Jesus himself speak of previous ages. So that's the previous ages. Okay. Um, so what we can do is we can do a chart here at this time of Jesus. Right. We're going to do previous ages. If I could only see it. Uh, 
All right, so we're gonna do previous ages. I'm gonna put that right here. From here to here. Then we're going to do Right, so we got previous ages, age in which Jesus came, right? So he was talking about some previous ages, now there's age in which he came. Now let's go back to some Bible verses here. So we're now in the age where Jesus lived, all right? And we go to Matthew 24, where we read, Jesus left the temple and was walking away when his disciples came up to him to call his attention to its buildings. Do you see all these things, he asked. Truly I tell you, not one stone here will be left on another. Every one will be thrown down. So he's telling them about the destruction of Jerusalem. Right? And they are asking him, when will this happen? What? The destruction he was just talking about. And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? So they're asking him, when is the age that they are currently in going to end? So let's go back to our drawing and indicate that the age was supposed to end. Okay? Now... He says to them, when you read it, he's talking to them about false messiahs coming, he's talking to them about being persecuted, he's talking to them about many false prophets. And he's saying that the gospel of the kingdom will, will be preached in the whole world as testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. End of what? The age. He's answering the question that they asked him in verse 3. The end of age. So, first of all, he connected the end of age with the destruction of Jerusalem, and also, with the gospel of the kingdom being preached, see, it was the gospel of the kingdom, not gospel of something else. Gospel of the kingdom, preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the, the end will come. So we, can, we have two things to check. The distraction of the temple, all right? Of and of Jerusalem. When did that happen? Well, about 70 AD. All right? And then we need to check whether the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. So was it preached everywhere? Now we have another way of seeing what's going on here because Jesus said to them quite clearly that they won't be able to he's telling them to rush when he's okay let me find it Colossians 122 23 
But now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight, without blemish and free from accusation. If you continue in your faith, established and firm, and do not move from the hope held out in the gospel. This is the gospel that you heard and that has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven, and of which I, Paul, have become a servant. It's already happened, people. If that isn't enough, let's take a look at another example. The faith and love that spring from the hope stored up for you in heaven and about which you have already heard in the true message of the gospel that has come to you. In the same way, the gospel is bearing fruit and growing throughout the whole world. But not all the Israelites accepted the good news, for Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our message? Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word about Christ. But I ask, did they not hear? Of course they did. Their voice has gone out into all the earth, their words to the ends of the earth. Now Paul is citing um, Isaiah 53, no, Psalm 19. Why is he citing Psalm 19 if it's not to be taken literally that, the, that it's been preached to the ends of the world? Another place, Romans 16. Now to him who is able to establish you in accordance with my gospel, the message I proclaim about Jesus Christ, in keeping with the revelation of the mystery hidden for long ages past, but now revealed and made known through the prophetic writings. Okay? So you can pick you, you can pick whichever of these passages. But they are all stating that the revealing of the gospel to the whole world has happened at that time when Paul was writing it. On the top of that, Jesus himself said, and I did a video about this, and I'm going to include some of the verses. But he said to them when he was sending them out in pairs to, re to preach the gospel, to hurry up because they won't be able to, to go to each Israelite town before the end comes, before he's back. Okay? He said that. People go over that passage. He also said that some of them that were standing there will still be standing there when he comes back. In other words, it had to happen within their lifetime. So, we've got Matthew here, 24, where? Let me summarize. The end of the age comes after the gospel is preached to the whole world and at the time when the temple in Jerusalem are destroyed. That was him speaking that. We know... From the verses I read to you, that already Paul has been speaking of the whole gospel being shared everywhere. And we also know that the distraction happened around 70 AD. So what are we talking about? What are we talking about? Now why is this important? It's important because from verse 36, he's talking about when exactly the end of the age comes. And he says, well, I don't even know, guys. Nobody knows when exactly, the day, the week, the year. He would just give them signs of when it is approaching. He said he doesn't even know when that happens. And then he's given examples to imagine what it'll be like. 
That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man, which was at the end of the age, which was at the time when the temple and Jerusalem were being destroyed, which was at the time when the gospel was preached, which was at the time when the generation was still there. And the generation, my dearest, is about 40 years as per Exodus, right? They had to stay in the desert for a generation, and it was 40 years. So, two men will be in the field, one will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding with a hand mill, one will be taken and the other left. He's speaking of what will happen at the end of the age. Well, this is the rapture. The body stayed here and their spirits left. Two men isn't two people. It's your spiritual men and it's your fleshly men. One stayed, one left. Two women is one spiritual woman and one physical woman. One left, one stayed. He is clearly stating that the rapture was going to happen at the end of the age where he was at. And I'm sorry... I'm sorry if that doesn't agree with your theology, but that's what the word says. Okay? And I challenge anyone who is teaching that the rapture is a future event to watch this video, go over all those verses, and tell me how it is possible that Jesus clearly stated that it's going to be at the end of the age that he was at. Now, we've got future ages. From the point of view of Jesus, right? From 70 AD until... And let's see what we read in Mark... Chapter 10, from verse 29. And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that has left house, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my sake, and the gospel's sake. But he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time, houses, and brethren, and sisters, and mothers, and children, and lands, with persecutions, and in the world to come, eternal life. Now, this word is in world. It's our word age. So, and in the age to come, eternal life. You can check it in the dictionary. Okay, I did. So, in the age to come, eternal life. So, he's saying that the eternal life wasn't accessible to people in the age that they were at, okay? But it's something that's coming in the next age or in the age that is after the one that he was at, in the future ages, okay? Or, well, in the next one, right? So tell me this. If... Eternal life in the, obviously, eternal kingdom was to be available in the age that would come after the age that Jesus lived in. How does the millennial kingdom fit into this whole scenario? So you've got all these ages, right? You've got the end of that age, rapture, and then future ages. He was preaching on the eternal kingdom coming down to earth, meaning it would be established on earth in the physical. So don't talk to me about eternal life 
without your body. No. Because it's supposed to be phys like a physical manifestation of the kingdom. So it's something that is concerning our 3D reality, right? So the eternal life cannot be contained within the millennial age, within the millennial reign, because millennial reign is just a thousand years. So where in this scenario fits the millennium? Well, it doesn't fit here. Because he says, in the age after this one, will come the eternal. Or you can obtain the, obtain the eternal life sometime after this age ends. How can it be eternal if you're putting a limit on it for a thousand years? I don't understand. Jesus never, never, never preached never told them about thousand years he wasn't talking to them about it the only reference you get about it is in the book of revelation right at the end of it and it is arguable that the book of revelation has been left in the same state as when it was written it is very arguable in fact, when you read the book of Revelation backwards, it suddenly makes more sense because the thousand, thousand year, years of rain suddenly is at the beginning. And then the devil has its reign and then we go into the eternal reign. Consider that. I beg you, go talk to Father and ask him. Has the rapture already happened? Long time ago. Has the millennial reign already happened? Long time ago. Ask him. When you accept his answers, you will understand that we were all fooled. That we were waiting for Father to come and fix our problems for us by a miraculous event where we literally are waiting for Him to kill our bodies and take our spirit away. Uh-uh. We've got what we've got. And it is up to us. To leave the world and create something better. We are the heirs. We are the heirs of the kingdom. Christ is supposed to reign within that kingdom. Not Jesus, but Christ. And all the brethren, there is no one king, only father. There is not another Messiah we're waiting for. And if you want to bet your whole life on one verse at the back of the last book of the Bible, that you cannot guarantee wasn't tampered with. If you're going to gamble your decisions you are making today about your life here, about the life of your children, based on a sentence about the millennial reign that could have very well have been at the beginning in Eden at the very start, at the golden age, instead of something that we're waiting for to come, while well, in fact Jesus said that it's the eternal reign that's next, not the millennial, then I don't know what to tell you. Go to Father, talk to Him. 
Father isn't happy with people sitting around, waiting before they start living the lives that he gave them. He's not happy with his children doing absolutely nothing to advance the kingdom or even live their own lives, but sitting on YouTube looking for information that fortify their beliefs. He's not happy with idling. He is not happy that his children aren't speaking with him about these matters. There is such a thing as being left behind. In this day and age, we are here. It is to be caught up in the narrative and expectations of the previous age. You're waiting for an event that has already happened. And so what Father has in store for you for now cannot be applied because you won't take it. You want history. And I'm sorry if I sound harsh to some of you. But hey, isn't it better to know the truth and understand that there's eternity ahead of us. And not just a thousand years. Why should that be a problem? If you don't want Father's kingdom here on the earth, it's not my problem. Father wants it here on the earth. And so it'll be on the earth. You can be part of it if you want to. Or you can still be part of the old system. It's your choice. 